Good morning, everyone. My name is Todd Cochran, and you're watching the Morning Tech Show. And uh, it is uh, a bright and bushy 6 a.m. here in Honolulu. <laughs> and if I have morning voice, uh, I apologize. But I want to welcome my my two co-hosts. I have uh, Jeffrey Powers from Geekazine.com up on top, and I have Patrick Lawson from TwoSmartGuys.com on the bottom. Good morning, gents. How are you? Good morning, Todd. Jeffrey, how very are you? well. How about yourself? Well, good. So, you know, I, one thing I want to do that I haven't been doing is in the morning is, you know, I, I am trying to, um, you know, kind of alternate who we have on the show every week. And I'm, I'm glad you guys were available and had time to chat with me, but I just want to take just a second and, you know, you guys are doing some uh, great stuff with your own blogs and your own uh, podcast. So Patrick, what's, what's been going on with two smart guys? Oh, we've been uh, checking out the new Nintendo 3DS and getting homebrew and stuff running on that. All the the tweaks, <laughs> all right? The, the fun stuff going on there. Did uh, Did you ever have problems with uh, with Apple on uh, doing any homebrew stuff, or did uh, are you good to go with them right now? So far, I'm good. At one point in time, they took down my feed because uh, I had the jailbreak in the title, I believe. Oh, so I just kind of avoid putting that on the RSS, and I'm okay for now. Right. <laughs> and and Jeffrey, you've got a stack of stuff going on. You're, you know, I've been uh, you you've been busy, my friend. What uh, what are you doing these days? Oh, we got a ton of stuff. I uh, got the regular podcast going. We got the day in tech history, the five tech things you should know. Uh still working on that new idea with the OTT. Right. Um really hasn't really jumped off the ground just yet, but uh uh, a lot of special media feed. I'll actually be going to Vegas in the beginning of May. I'm planning my trip to New York, uh, Blog World New York in the middle of May, and then I'm going to be back in Vegas in the beginning of June. So oh, you're lots be, of great video. Yeah, You're going to be busy. I haven't uh, yeah. decided whether or not I'm going to Vegas yet. They uh, they called me and made an offer for us to do something, and I'm considering whether or not to do it. But it's it's just tough. You know, we're doing, uh, we're doing NAB. Um, I'm actually leaving for, for NAB tomorrow night. My schedule actually opened up, so I'm going to be going out. But, uh, you know, doing Blog World East and Blog <laughs> World West, I, you know, I don't know. It's From a company perspective, it's like, you know, it's a $10,000 bill by the time you get over, you know, doing what you got to do, hotels and getting people there. And um, we hadn't budgeted, and we just hired a new hire. And... Uh, you know, we got a sales gal fully on staff now, and and uh, focus is revenue. But uh, as much as I want to go to Blog World, I don't know. I don't know if it's in the budget or not. So um, we'll have to see for Blog World East. But uh, I know it's going to be a little bit of a different crowd. But I really and I really wish they hadn't split the show. It just, you know, people if people from New York say they can't go to Vegas or meet somewhere in the middle, it's just it's a it's a Mm, how should I say it? It's a poor excuse when I have when I come from Hawaii to go to to Vegas and they can't go come from New York to Vegas, especially when it's as cheap exactly. to get there. So um, we'll see. We'll see how the show does. Tied to the book, uh, that book show. It's kind of an interesting. I don't know. What do you guys think of who who they've tied to? It just seems it seems kind of weird to me. Yeah, and they're they've got a, a five year deal with them. So Jeffrey, what's the story on their new media tracks? Who's just have they gotten submissions? Are you working that for them or? Um, I tried to contact them. I haven't heard anything back. Okay. So I don't know what they're doing on that. Yeah, I have no idea what they're doing either. So anyway, it's still kind of an up in the air, and I, I'm I don't know. I might end up going out, but uh, um. It's um, uh, we'll have to see, but it's no here nor there. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm personally gonna check with my sponsors if uh, if we can get uh, if we can get a sponsorship going. I'm gonna go. If not, it's I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to push it. I guess. Right. I, I I'm following you. Okay. Well, I've got a bunch of stuff in the stack here for us this morning, and uh, it's kind of like mystery bag for you guys because you guys don't know what I'm going to be uh, going to be talking about and shared. Let's start off, and I want to uh, just talk a little bit about the Engadget crew and uh, them largely jumping ship 
and uh, heading over to New uh, New Horizons, going over to SB Nation. Um, what do you think this is going to, do you think this is going to affect uh, Engadget.com? you think it's going to affect the quality of the content over there? I, I haven't really been following that story too much. I, I just saw that the, was the, the editor in chief had left a few weeks ago and I guess apparently other people have been leaving. Yeah. They've, they've got like uh seven folks, I think that in, in total, uh, bounced and, uh, they, uh, they're um, going over to SB Nation to start a tech show. Now, SB Nation has been um, pretty successful. They, they're they running a bunch of sports shows, and uh, they've got a you know full production staff, full, you know, it's it's a full-up media house. They're, I guess for a better word, I, they're not necessarily copying the Revision 3 model, but they're, you know, they have all these different sports sites and uh, lots of traffic, lots of uh, followers, and then they're going to go over there and, and uh, seven of the guys from Engadget are going to go over and start writing uh, for SB Nation and, and forming up a tech blog. I don't know if this is a a a, um, a hit on AOL and, uh, you know, with their policies and having, you know, purchased Huffington Post or not. But, Jeffrey, have you followed this at all? Um, I followed a few, uh, few of the AOL Engadget bloggers, and so far they haven't said anything bad or, or anything like that they've they've just basically said hey i've spent a lot of time here in uh at at aol and in gadget and it really hasn't uh it's, it's time to move on so and jeffrey you're, you're, oh, you're just a little dark, you're just a little dark yeah <laughs> and you look great on the actual camera so it's just when i flip you into live is your little dark well, anyway, I don't know. I guess we'll see. <clears throat> I've been trying to watch the actual content over there, and it doesn't seem to be affecting too much. So maybe they, you know, maybe those guys had been relegated to not writing. Oh, your your contrasty is crazy now. So drop yeah, the contrast. I'm, uh, I'm, work, I'm working on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh wow, this is a <laughs> experimentation in uh, in 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 whiteout. <laughs> Oh, anyway, yeah, you're you were better before. I I just won't bring you up on. There you go. That was oh, very close. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <coughs> so, anyway, okay. that we'll skip. We'll move on from there. <clears throat> so, there is a uh, ongoing desire by companies now to track us much much closer. And there was a new art arc over on NewScientist.com talking how internet probes now and how they're tracking us, even without us checking in, can get us pretty close, can get us within about 1,800 meters uh, through your IP address, um, through if you're mobile and on the move and doing stuff on the net. They can track you down to about 1,800 meters now without uh, without doing any, any type of uh, uh, checking in. How does that, you know, how does it make you feel? warm and loved warm and loved but does it bother but does it bother you that they they can come in that close that they can you know that the nah not really i know? mean i we're we're all used to it now and and uh there are some people that are probably going to be really upset that it happens but the reality is if you're not if you don't feel like you need to be accountable uh, for your actions, and maybe you're not doing something on the up. Well, the question though is, though, is is it become the new norm for us to be used to be tracked? You know, I I don't think that that's the new norm, is it? Is or is that is that the new norm? Is that what we have now, just to to live with, Patrick? I guess so. That's just uh, the way it's heading. <laughs> like Jeffrey was saying, if you don't want to be caught doing something don't do it <laughs> yeah well you know that's you know being caught doing one thing is you know is one thing but just the simple fact that all right i'm driving in my car i'm not uh you know i'm not um engaging with a external audience and i load my you know i load my phone and all of a sudden i get an advertisement for a uh, you know car wash place down the street on the mobile device I don't know. I think at some point it becomes a little bit intrusive. And, you know, you look at what Pandora has, is allegedly 
um, have done by capturing all kinds of demographics and then serving ads to them. And, you know, they're, they got a federal grand jury that's looking at them right now. So, you know, I think the federal government's taking a closer look at this. I don't know if they're going to do anything or not, but um, I don't know. I, I, I don't mind if I opt in, but I don't like being tracked if I don't. Yeah, I think I think it should be an opt-in issue myself. I don't think that people should be just automatically recording your location data without a, an, an obvious warning, you know, like when you go to it that says this is tracking your location. If it's just something in the fine print or one of the, you know, one uh, sentence in a 20-page EULA or something like that, right. I don't think I don't I don't think that's necessarily fair cuz nobody's reading those EULAs. It's when it's something as important as important as tracking your your GPS location or monitoring your audio, like that color application, apparently, right. it records audio and sends data back. It it may not supposedly be recording anything audible that you can understand, but it's still recording audio. Well, if it's recording audio, then <laughs> that means she's calling home to mama. And uh, the question is, where's that data going? Okay, color says they're a private corporation, and this is just going for their internal use. Um, you have to, if you're in the IT space and you're an IT manager, or as I like to commonly refer to an IT Nazi, which is people hate it when I say that, um, if you have a workplace policy that doesn't allow maybe camera phones or, you know, some, some workplaces have different policies on mobile devices. You know, think about the terror that's going through <clears throat> banks and lawyer firms when you can have an app that just is listening. And that, uh, wow. It's, I just don't know. I don't, it's, and it, it's supposed to be illegal to record people's audio, even like surveillance cameras and things, without their consent, unless there's some kind of a warning. Well, you've um, given your consent or, by saying, here, I agree to their terms of service and everything, you know? So, I don't know. I think it's but, it's. but do the other people in the room give their consent? Well, that's true. That's true too. So I, if they say it doesn't record audio or just sends snippets back to help find location, I guess that's one thing. But it does make you go hmm a little bit. It sure does. Hey, and I don't think uh, the companies are going to worry about it unless people really you know get up in arms about it and they start posting online and blogs and shows like this and say, hey, stop it, knock it off, or yeah. we're not going to use your product. I think the public, at in general, don't uh, don't have largely a clue on what some of these apps are doing. You know, they're willy nilly buying apps from people that you have no idea who they're. You know, you look at what's going on with Android, having them pull down malware apps, and um, you know, so it is a little bit of the wild west out there. At least, you know, as much as we hate the iTunes or the Apple App Store review process, the at least I guess they're looking through the code to make sure that these apps aren't doing something that they, they largely shouldn't be doing. So well, I guess well, time will tell where this heads. You know, I think uh, you'll, you're going to like this one, uh, Jeffrey, is uh, Waz is uh, thinking about, uh, cons would consider going back to Apple. What, uh, based, you know, you, you met with Waz last year and talked with him. And uh, so, you know, what do you think about, you know, if Waz said he would consider returning to Apple. Do you think uh, Waz has got the... Uh, the uh, the juice to get back there and be be productive. Jeffrey, do you think he's got the juice to go back? Oh, we're not hearing Jeffrey. We lost Jeff. Yeah, we lost Jeff. Yeah, we're well, not. I think that'd be awesome if Waz went back. He seems like a really eccentric, cool guy. I mean, yeah, he's always playing pranks and just kind of a. Kind of an out there character. Can you hear us? Uh, give us a thumb up if you can hear us. We we can't hear you. You just fell off the map. That's weird. He's in one minute. All right, trades. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you know, I guess, uh, and if you want, it, Jeffrey, just try calling back in. So he's he's double checking things there, but um, I don't know. It'd be kind of interesting to see if Waz went back. You know, he's he's eccentric enough that uh, he I think he would definitely shake things up. You know, with Steve Jobs not uh, in the house right now on medical leave, it might Check be interesting. 
Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, you, uh, you, you touched know, something. I, I you, just, you touched something, yeah? <laughs> I unplugged my USB uh, uh, headset and plugged it back in. You know, so. normally Skype doesn't pick it right back up, so you, you got lucky on uh, being able to reconnect. <laughs> so what what do you think? Do you think the Waz man should should come back to uh, to Apple? Well, for everybody that doesn't know, Steve Wozniak has been working with a company called Fusion IO, and they create what's called NAND memory, which is basically flash memory for servers. Um, we've uh, I've highlighted him a couple times. Uh, I don't know if if you remember, but there was a video I had where I was standing in front of a video wall which had like fifteen hundred videos playing behind me, and uh, that's that's Fusion IO. So he's been very active in not only the education of, uh, of te the technology on the server end as of late, but he's also, he's also kept up on things. So I think if he went back to Apple, he'd bring a lot of, uh, a lot of knowledge and a lot of friends with him. And I think uh, we could see an Apple that would be like uh, blowing away any type of PC uh, if, if he was to come back. So, yeah, there's a, a good possibility that could happen. He said that he was thinking about uh, making, I mean, hope that he'd try to make Apple more open. And I think that would go directly in the face of everything Jobs is really kind of put in place over there. So it'd be interesting to see what would happen if he went back to Apple. It would definitely be an interesting dynamic, uh, uh, that's for sure. All right, the next thing I've got here for you guys is... Um, it kind of goes 